Hello and welcome to Show Me Some Television, the segment where I talk about television shows that I'm getting to binge watch thanks to Roger's Show Me service, which I'm technically getting for free thanks to my internet service. Um, in this one, I'm going to take a look at something a little different. We're going animated with Iron Man Armored Adventures. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not usually into alternate universe tellings of regular stories. Um, if you're going to do Iron Man, do Iron Man. Um, if you want to do something like Iron Man, then do something like Iron Man, but don't call it Iron Man. And in this one, um, essentially they're telling alternate, you know, Iron Man stories um, as Tony Stark is a teenager. Yeah, so they're you, you, you get what I'm saying. Like, they're going for that 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 crowd, right? They, <laughs> they It's a Saturday morning. Kids want to see kids doing fantastic things, right? So let's make Iron Man Iron Teen. But they don't call him Iron Teen. They call him Iron Man. Should have just called him Robo Teen or something like that. But, of course, you want to... You know, they're using all the stuff from Iron Man, so you gotta you gotta play off that Marvel's making it type thing. Whatever you're gonna, you're, it's what it is, right? There's nothing you can do. But honestly, I mean, even the theme song, it's like he's he's a kid, he's a kid, but now he's Iron Man. It's like no, the dude's still a teenager. He's not a man. He's not an adult. Um. <laughs> so yeah. It's it's whatever you want. It's it's a it's a different telling of Iron Man. It. And this is why I'm kind of okay with it. Though there are elements from the Iron Man series used within the, the cartoon, it isn't the actual... It's not just a retelling of the same story. It's a different story altogether, though it borrows heavily from the Iron Man universe, from the comics, um, in terms of characters, villains, etc., etc. Um... Uh, in this one, essentially, Tony Stark's father has been killed, um, and so he is looking to inherit Stark Enterprises, but unfortunately he's just a teen. He's not 18 years old yet, so he can't. And therefore, the what you find out later, the guy who essentially was involved, well, one of the guys involved, um, who was against his father and wanted to um, do things his father didn't want to do, you know, drive the company in a different direction, you know, military, wanted to make weapons, all that kind of stuff, and, you know, Tony's father didn't want to do that. Um, he essentially takes over the company, and uh, young Tony Stark has, there's nothing he can do about it, but he has invented Iron Man. He's invented this suit of armor, um, and so he can... Um, essentially battle evil and uh the first season that you know which is what we're talking about here um deals with him sort of it, it's odd it, the main thing that it's dealing with is tracking down the rings uh the mandalorian rings um that uh his father had started looking out for but now another teenager <laughs> <laughs> Gene Khan, aka um, the oh, what did they? Call? Oh man, no, I don't remember what he's called. Uh, what is he called? What is he called? He is called the Mandarin. <sighs> oh my God, I figure I remember that kind of stuff, right? Um, yeah, so he's the the he takes over the Mandarin. He, he same type of thing. It's a power play. He's the rightful heir to the Mandarin throne, but his uncle has sort of stolen it from him when he was young, and he's been controlling the entire um, organization um, from him. But uh, So Gene Khan essentially teams teams up with Tony to find these men, these, these rings, um, and that's a good portion of the first season. But it's not the entire first season, and the, it, it really gets sidetracked because there's also the story about him wanting to 
um, stop uh, Obadiah Stane, who's the guy who's in tra- charge of Stark Enterprises now, from doing anything bad with you know his father's company or his company now. Um, there's also the fact that all of these uh, experimental inventions that his father created, um, but you know, housed because they weren't safe, have somehow gotten out, and now he's having to deal with all these different criminals who have all these super, you know, powers because of this technology. Um, so we get obviously Tony Stark's character, uh, played by uh, or voiced, sorry, by Adrian Pet- Pet- Petru. Um, who I don't know. I don't know him from any any real thing. Um, he uh, has done some. He's done a lot of work. You know, voice act, a little bit of voice acting here. Um, if you know the television series Nana, um, he was Naoki, um, or from the s- TV series Edge Mount, he was Mitch Lecky. Um, but I didn't know him from anything. Um, next up, you also have, of course, the character of James Rhodes. Yes, he's there, and he happens to be, you know, Tony Stark's best buddy. Grew up with him, and his James Rhodes' mother is now technically the legal guardian of Tony. Um, I think she was the lawyer. She's the lawyer or in charge. I don't know. Whatever. For whatever reason, I think she was the 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 lawyer involved with his father and therefore they were good friends and their family was good friends and she was you know because they were good friends she was made legal guardian of tony stark and so james rhodes who does eventually you know go on to become war machine because you know tony stark can he's made iron man he can make other suits james rhodes eventually steps into that role and um we do get some war machine episodes um and that was voiced by uh, a fellow by the name of Daniel Bacon, who, um, again, small roles here and there, nothing uh, I, I really recognized, um, but uh, yeah, and actually he did a lot of uh, actual acting in, in television shows and movies and such, but there are small bit roles on the side, so um, I'm sure he will get uh, more stuff coming out. He was actually in um, the ABCs of Death, uh, the first one, for the segment V is for Vagitus. Um, so, if you want to check him out, go there. Otherwise, yeah, I don't. I really don't know who he is. Um, so we got Tony Starks, we got James Rhodes. Of course, we have to have Pepper Potts. Pepper Potts <laughs> is played played by Anna Cummer who has done quite a lot of uh, voice acting. Um, Current stuff she's in, she is the voice of Strawberry Shortcake in Strawberry Shortcake's Berry Bitty Adventures. So if you're looking for something recent that she's involved in, there's that. She's done um, uh, Monster Buster Club as Samantha. Um, She's been in all sorts of different things. Uh, Small little roles here and there. Uh, a lot of voice work, uh, be it for video games and 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 uh, such, you know, Care Bears and and, and the like. <laughs> um, so yeah, you'd probably know her more for her voice than anything. Um, and of course, like I said, we've got uh, Gene Con, who you know, the Mandarin, and that's voiced by Vincent Tong. Now, Vincent Tong, you might know from a lot of other things. Um, he is. Uh, uh, for all of you Ninjago lovers uh, from Ninjago Masters of Spinjitzu, he is the voice of Kai. Uh, from Lolly Rock, he's Mephisto. Um, from Nerds and Monsters, he's Erwin Chang Stein. Um, from Packages from Planet X, he's the voice of Dan. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, from Voltron Force. If you watch that, he's the voice of Daniel. Um, Kid vs. Cat, he is the voice of Henry Chan. Um, he did a whole bunch of, nin- uh, you know, the Ninjago shorts and stuff like that. Um, he was also um, the uh, voice of uh, Tuda Matsuda from Death Note. 
So he's been doing voice work and all sorts of stuff for a long time, and he's had bit roles in all sorts of other, you know, cartoons like Max Steel and Slug Terra and all those kind of things, um, but nothing like major roles. So, yeah, he's definitely in there. And you know what? The voice acting in this is quite well. The animation is a little different. It's uh, clearly like anything that's new. It's done on computers. The backgrounds look um, very sleek. Sometimes they look like they're almost, you know, like uh, traditional animation paintings. Sometimes they're a little bit more like um, uh, new uh, animation where it's it's very sleek and robotic, you know, obviously because of the way it is. But the animation over top of the backgrounds is very two-toned. Um, and by two-tone, I mean um, you have your, your, your um, main color and then you have your shadow color, which is a darker version of that. And that's used in everything. And, it, you know, it, it's very almost like flash in terms of the way it moves and the way it, it works. And obviously with the effect that it doesn't have a lot of different colors and a lot of variation in terms of its animation, it's, it's, it, it's the two-tone nature over top. And it's very flat. Um, so and you, you actually see that in a lot in, uh, in a lot of the animated um, action type stuff these days. Um, even in the past, I mean, it, it was just one of the easy ways to do it, right? Two-tone it, it was an easy way to do animation to get the, the depth of, of field from your characters. But this is obviously clean lines, all done on computer. So everything is really, you know, sharp. Um, but you have that, there's a very big juxtaposition of the actual animated characters on top of these beautiful background settings. So it's uh, a little bit weird at first if you've not if you're not rec you know used to this type of animation but at the same time it works it totally works um, <laughs> um i think it took me a few episodes into it before I, I i really started to like it um at first it was a little weird but it, it really it grew on me really quick and i was automatically in it. now one of the strong points about the the cartoon at least in season one is the writing it's actually a decent story um each obviously each episode is self-contained but as you progress through the season previous stuff that happens in previous episodes obviously affects stuff in later episodes short of the fact that i think they should have concentrated on the mandarin story and then had you know less other stories to deal with there are just too many arcs going on um and i think they should have saved some of them honestly for you know second season third season fourth seasons uh concentrated on the mandarin story played that one out while dealing with the Oba obadiah stained uh stark enterprises story that way you have two of them and you can deal with you know introduction of you know the evil um super or evil villains super villains um, because you do get some of the ones that you're, you're used to, right? Um, you do get uh, Whiplash. Whiplash is there. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's you know, somewhat of a, a recurring character, I guess you'd call it. Um, let's see who else is, shows up. Blizzard. Blizzard is in there. Classic Iron Man characters, right? Um, and so eventually we get sort of like cameos. We get a cameo by the Incredible Hulk. He just sort of shows up out of nowhere. Um, we get, I think, there, there's Nick Fury. Nick Fury is, is in this. Uh, not, it's, 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 he's actually voiced by Dean Redman. I know what you're hoping, but, um, but yeah, no. <laughs> um, who else? Black Panther has some, uh, some episodes that he shows up and there's you know other ones that you you know when you watch it you they'll, they'll pop up and stuff like that and of course the mandarin um those would be the the big ones there's some other ones that i didn't really recognize and they may have been from the comics but i didn't i, I didn't really i didn't remember them if they were um but in all likelihood they could have been new creations anything is possible um but uh yeah, it's definitely, you know, I'm enjoying it. I'm looking forward to season two and to see which other characters get introduced into this uh, show. Um, 
how it plays out, how Tony Stark deals with it. Because I think in first season he's like 16, and in second season he's probably going to be like 17, and he'll be like a year away from becoming 18 and taking over Tony Stark Enterprises. And I'm sure there will be more of that to deal with. I'm sure there's going to be more Mandarin stuff to deal with because there's, I think at the near the end of season one, there's sort of like a big revelation um, with regards to that storyline. And then, who knows? It, it could be anything <laughs> after that. But yeah, if you're into Iron Man and you like animation um, and you don't mind having sort of like a different take on it, I definitely would recommend Iron Man uh, Armored Adventures, um, at least from season one. As far as I know, it only got two seasons, though. It's 26 episodes in season one. I will let you know what season two is like once I finish that. But, um, yeah, so far, so good. So, maybe I'll be talking about uh, Iron Man Armored Adventures season two very soon. Who knows? <laughs> Anyways... That's it for, for this video. Um, if you have any questions about the, the show, post a comment down below, and hopefully if I don't know the answers, I'll be able to find out for you. And uh, yeah, until next video, take care. Have a good one.